guys, welcome back to the video. It's Den Star Gamer, and today we're going to be talking about one of the a very uh, an early home computer that a lot of people have heard of, but don't know very much about. And that here is the Apple II. So here it is, and um, one issue that I'm going to mention right off the bat is cameras, terrible times recording screens, especially CRT ones like this. So. That's the reason that this video is going to look a lot worse than it should. Because if you look at this screen, it looks kind of horrible, but really in person, it's sharp. And here is the Apple II. On this desk. And I also got the floppy drives and stuff. So, let's get started with the video. Okay. So. I can better luck getting it there okay so there's the computer so first of all let's do a quick tour okay so here's the computer itself it's, and here's the keyboard it's got a really nice keyboard and when you turn on the computer there's a little light that pops up here here's the monitor it's got a bunch of controls that you never really mess with on the back which just make really useless And it's also got some more controls. Front here. And. Uh, but here's what a floppy drive looks like. There's a few different models. So I'm just going to go show you a um, normal one real quickly. Okay. This is the normal Apple II floppy drive. And here that's what it looks like. Normal standard. Uh, one. That one was actually made for the Apple II GS, which I don't own, but it works with the older ones. This is not the original Apple II. The original Apple II was released in 1977, are very rare. This is an Apple IIe, which was released in 1983. It was, basi it was basically a higher-end version designed to compete with the Commodore 64. And um, so it's also it's amazing how easy it is to get into these things. So just watch this. There you go, I got to hold it off with one hand. That was my left hand. Even more impressive. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a quick tour. And um Okay, so first that me this giant metal thing's the power supply. So got lots of chips. Then this thing that was came with most of the uh this a bunch of different versions of the Apple II with this one. These ones would come with this board here, which um would uh give I think give it some more memory and allow it to be used with eighty column. That's a, a printer card somebody add to this. I'll explain the card system in one second. But um, that, I don't actually own the printer for it. And then there's the disk drive controller card, which allows me to use it with the floppy drives. Okay. So. The cards were something that Apple put in these things. There's eight, eight card slots. Two of them are used. And you can buy these, and then Apple would sell these cards. You can put in the machine and use. So then over here. Lots more parts. And, um, let's see if I can find CPU. Well, there's a CPU called well, just 6503. I assume that's the CPU. That there. I assume. I'm not entirely sure, though. And, um, these are probably. There's a lot of socketed chips you can see. And, um, what I'm going to about the Apple II is most of them still work today. So this was a very expensive computer. I think uh costing around one thousand two hundred dollars for just the computer. Remember that's just the computer. No monitor, no disk drive, no cards of any kind, no floppy disks. Well I could get a Commodore 64 with basically nothing as well for around five hundred and ninety-five dollars. Um they were drop and they dropped in price fast. Plus the Apple II is a lot harder to hook up to a normal TV, you would need an adapter. And uh, now let's just a little look around the back. Let's turn it like that. Okay, so we had a bunch of ports here. And, um, okay, so over here is, um, power port and the power switch. It's got a really nice power switch. It's in a bad location because of the power switch. This is, this is, there's a, this is a parallel printer port. This is not standard. Remember, that's on the card. And there's all the different card slots. Over here is a joystick port. That over there is a video connector. This is a um, 
the distract port, and over here we got our two cassette ports. As you can see, I got this a uh, little cable that's in one of them. I'll explain what that is in, um, later. Okay. So now I'm just gonna go push this back in, and uh, let's try powering it on. Just saying, if there was no distract, it wouldn't make what the um, it's a clicking noise that it makes with powers on. So you hear that noise that came from the, that? That there was the... Uh, okay, so here it is. So I'd be like, okay, let's go do some stuff. Oh man, and my key... My broke of my computers. My new $1,400 computers work. Okay, it looks like we're calling Apple. Hey, Apple, my, my computer doesn't work. Well, yeah. So you might be like, oh, that sucks. Well, there actually is a way to fix that. The way you do it is by hitting Control Reset. Yeah, there's a reset button. But it doesn't do anything alone, so I was going to do Control Reset. Okay. Now look, this disk drive just turned off, and we're here. And we can type. So another an annoying thing with the Apple II is the delete button. So you think it's basically like backspace. Nope, it just prints this random character on the screen. The only way to backspace is by using the cursor keys, which are weird. As you can see, weird cursor key right here. To go space around, and yeah. And uh, you can, of course, do um, basic programs. It's a little hard to do a basic program with only one hand. Twenty go to ten. What am I doing something wrong? One second, we're just having some time. Oh, is caps lock stop screen with you up? Okay, I was gonna go restart my computer. That's weird. Well, now it's working. Sorry about that, I've never seen that before. So there you go, high quality basic programs. Okay, so now let's see some of the things we can actually do on Okay, so now it's time for me to show you how the cassette methods, like how using like loading and saving programs from cassette works. Unfortunately, the cassette drives were horrible and they barely worked, which is the reason why most people just bought floppy drives. But there's one cool thing you can do that allows you to load games using either hooking up like a computer or your phone. And I go into uh, ASCII Express, um, ASCII Express .net, and then you can um, go load. So I'll show you how you do that. Just turn on your Apple. So reset. Load. Turn. Then over here, just go find the game you want. And play. Widget in the play. And it didn't work. Yeah, as I said, the cassette mechanism was extremely unreliable and doesn't always work correctly. Which is the reason why, as I said before, they made the floppy drives. They worked a lot better. Let's see if we can work something. Oh, I see what I'm doing wrong. My volume is too low. <coughs> okay. You can't hear the loading noise. Okay, that's a good sign. You can't hear the loading noise because it's, um, cut, because it's, because it's going to go, yes, it's working. That means it's working, you see. Beep's the first time to me it, it hears something. 
And if it says loading and it says the correct setting settings, it's pretty much going to work. I think I only had one time when it didn't work correctly. Okay, that glitch means that's about to finish up. And I'm sorry about the amount of glare and how you can see me. So, let's get going. So, this is Galaxian. Just telling you, as I said before, the game looks old. The game looks much better in real life than it does here. It also probably sounds an infinite number of times better. So that's that. Okay, so. But now let's talk about floppy drives. First of all, no more of that nonsense. Okay, so here's a disk drive. As I said, most people would use the standard disk drive. So let me try, so let's go try out some disks. So the first thing, so that's the first thing I'm going to do is show you a game. Unfortunately, all the disk games I own are all stupid, like this one here. They're all for like little kids. So this one's ages four to ten, and the disc it says ages four to seven. So let's do this. Don't need that anymore. Just insert that into the drive and close it. And you just wait for it to load. It does take a little bit to load the game. There we go. And the controls are horrible. Either you use, you pay you pay a lot of money for expensive joystick, which are actually pretty rare today, or you use I J K and M. Come on, you can't just use W S and D. You gotta use this crazy arrangement. It makes zero sense, and it's stupid. And what? God, this game's just annoying. And it's boring. It's designed for little kids. It actually beat the entire game in about 10 minutes. <laughs> it's a really easy game. I beat like the entire. It's a puzzle game. It's a really easy puzzle game. I'm not gonna play right now because I don't want anyone to. Get, I don't want anyone to get too bored. But let's just go start it so I can show you a little bit of it. You can see, you just really just do these simple easy puzzles and stuff. Let's see if I can guess one right right now. And I missed. And you see, there you go. Okay, so now let's show a slightly more exciting game. Let's put a floppy disk away. This is Wheel of Fortune. I have this on a uh, Commodore 64 as well, but the Commodore floppy drives don't work, so I can't play it. And it just fell right out of its disk sleeve. Okay, so. Here's what the game looks. This one takes a half an hour to load. That was one of the ones. Just gonna go insert it. This game is also well on DOS, I think too. And yeah, here's the C64 floppy disk. That's just a Commodore one. It does have some. I'm not gonna load it all the way because it takes a while to load. But I'm just gonna load it up to a, about as where as I can show you some of the music that's in the game. Because it does got some cool music. How does it load all the way? Eject your floppy disk, flip it over, reinsert the drive, and turn. That's all I'm going to show you now. Okay. So now I'll show you how you save files to a disk. Well, you're going to need something called DOS. And there's a bunch of different versions of it. I'm just going to show you um, DOS 3.3. This is um, 
here it is. This disc is uh, DOS, has a version of DOS called DOS 3.3. There's a bunch of different versions, but this is just DOS 3.3. And, um, because there's really no disc commands. The only thing you can do is load a disc. So, I'll show you how this works. And this is not an original copy that you would buy at a store. The original copy would probably look a thousand times better. Well, let's just load it up, and then I'll go insert that disc that I made myself. This, as you can see, is just a floppy disk. This is standard floppy disk. This actually got some files on it. I'll show you some of them. Okay. It also allow, this also will allow us to see some graphics capabilities. Okay, so I switch disks. I watch this some command that we do. Cat, a log. As you can see, we can see all the things on our disk. So, let's load up some of the ones I made. Okay. Load test. This is a very simple program. I use it usually to test out computers. Very simple, as you can see. Okay. So now we're going to go. Load. Just show you this program. There it is. It's simple enough. Insert first number. Let's do a three or seven. And how about plus ten? What about six hundred and sixty-six? Nine million three thousand eight hundred and ninety-four. And have a division. And I do that right. Oh my god, it's a big number. Okay, so I'm just going to show you one more. Load demo 2. This program I showed at the start of the video. Here it is. Not that long. This is just really a way to show some of the simple Apple II graphics commands of how you can, some of the cool things you can do. And oh yeah, this monitor also, you can change it to look like a monochrome monitor, so I'll show you how awful that would look. <laughs> now that looks useless. Okay, so um, that's that. And oh yeah, one more thing, if you just insert the disc with no DOS 3.3, this actually will look like a version of DOS. Which we're doing right now. So as you see, it's it's actually technically in DOS. And when you're in DOS to get anything done, you gotta uh, I spit typo. Cat a log. There you go. Let's go check our floppy disk. Now I'm gonna show you um this little program that I made. I ne I haven't finished it yet. Here it is. Oh god. This is this little game I made. It's a text adventure that I made. It's made out of basic. Kind of difficult to make a game. And oh yeah, one more thing I'm gonna show you real quick. Let's just gonna wait for it to load up. On an Apple II, if you have an 80 column graphic, an 80 column card in it, or and most Apple II E's, like the Apple II E enhanced models, like this one, I like to tell if it's an enhanced. Is if it has the, the seat says enhanced right next to the light, that's an enhanced model. Or any of the ones with the number pad. So if you type in PR number sign three, watch this. Now, as you can see, 80 column video. Okay. So, list. Wait, no. I think I'll load it still. Load. Escape. Now, watch this list. Now, look how long this program is. About 300 lines of code. It's about 30 lines of code, which is not very much if you actually think about it. But for a um, basic program, for really all it does, it's actually kind of a little bit. Okay, and run. Okay, so let's do a little bit of playing. End Star proudly presents Escape the Prison. Hit any key to start. After a few weeks, fellow inmate asks you if you want to escape with him. Nope! You hear a prisoner shouting at a guard. Clearly, you tried to escape and failed. You may, you wake up in the morning as breakfast. You hear another prisoner asking a few people who want to escape with him. I'm really good at this game, so I'm not to be Nope. 
Shape a yes. And I beat it. But that's what happens when you made the game. You know how to beat it. So now I'm going to go show you some actual software that somebody would have run. Because these devices were not, like, it's, were not just used for gaming or playing around with. They were also designed for business computers. They also could be used in business or school computers. They're usually often used in the education market after Commodore discontinued the pet. The pets were. The pet was a better uh, education computer, but they discontinued it. And that guy ended that. Okay, so now I'll show you Appleworks. Okay. So then this is Appleworks here. As you can see, it's in a bunch of disks. In fact, you got four desks. I'll explain, I'll show you what all of them are. You have startup floppy disk, the actual stuff itself, some sample files, and this presents file. Apple doesn't allow this software. After that. Okay, here we are. A little yes, we can. And I can program the disk in. Sorry about uh, that. I had to restart that. I was restarting this part because the last part we were having some problems. So, as I said, I got some of my own files over here that no one cares about. So we're going to look at the sample disks. Which, um, you have to ask where do you put your sample files. So I'm actually going to go put those into disk 2. Okay, so as you can see, this software here actually is one of the few things that use that can use disk two. So I'm actually going to go use disk two. That's going to be the one that we're going to go insert this other disk into. So here's how we're going to use it. Going to go click. I files to desktop. Disk two. And then we're going to see a few files there. They are Mom's Bulletin, Organic Pies, Organic Growth, Our Budget, Personal Worth. Why, those sound really excited. Let's just do how about... Let's do uh, Mom's Bulletin as a word processor file. I'll show you the other ones in one minute. Okay. So as you can see, this here is what the word processor looks like. It's actually surprisingly long. I could only imagine sitting for three hours and typing something on this computer. It must be a really nice experience because this keyboard's great. Now, if I click work with these files on desktop, there it is because it's the only one. I have files desktop, let's add another one. Disk 2. I don't know if there's any way to add multiple videos at the same time. I don't think there is. Okay, let's do a spreadsheet. Organic growth. Well, that sounds really exciting. Organic growth. What does that even mean? I don't know. I really don't care, actually. But let's do it. Okay. Here it is. Quality audio. Okay, so yeah, this is what a spreadsheet looks like. And uh, escape. Now, if I hit work mode, the file on the desktop, I can choose which one I want to do. I can also save desktop files to disk. Like, basically, the idea of that is you can load as you can. Out of all, but you didn't have your d disk on you at the time, so you'd save it to your disk then. Okay. Let's just go look at other activities for a second. Let's see. Basically, it's change current disk or ProDOS prefix. List all files of current disk drive. Well, let's just check that real quick. List all Create a subdirectory, delete files from disk, format a blank disk, formatting disk takes forever. Select standard location of data disk, specify information about your printer. Oh, come on. I don't have a printer. Okay. So, there's a, f there's a, you're right, so here's how you quit out of the thing. It's really pointless, because really the only way you really can quit out is just doing this. So now let's go take some of the floppy disks out of the drives. And as I said before, 
The sample file disk is really just like again. What I keep doing it to keep, just show you how the software works. You really would use your own disk. Because second of all, the sample file disk is right protected, so you can't even write to begin with. And I'll show you um, a piece of educational software because that's everyone's favorite thing: educational stuff. I'm just currently reorganizing all of these Apple Works discs because I have about a million. Okay, Fact Master. It's a math game, just in case you can't tell. So I'm just gonna go insert that into the disc. Caps lock is down. The reason it says you must be the teacher is because nobody else is. And this software actually looks better on a monochrome monitor. I mean, much better, so I'm just going to click the button to make it monochrome. Plus, it's also easier for you guys to understand. Teacher. <coughs> nope. I don't care. That means now my students can sign as a teacher and give themselves less work. What would you like to explain in your, uh... Um... Free computers. Thank you. To it's color monitor but music is one of them. Okay. So now we're gonna be, this is kinda like this kinda reminds me of Google Classroom for some reason. Here we are. So let's go and roll student. <laughs> What's the student's name? Ryan. Session length. We're gonna make him have a really easy session. Teach subtraction after. What do we really mean? 100%. Enter numbers to change. Two. Twelve. So this is clearly designed for kids a lot younger than me, just in case you can't tell. Come on, we'll close out of this. Okay, it's loading. Then I'll show you what we're gonna do after that. It takes a while to do this. Okay, well there he is. Now I'm just gonna L to go to close back to the login page. Okay, so now, as you see, it says free computers. Now we're gonna go sign in as Brian. Which I spelled wrong. I spelled my own name wrong. Well, that's unfortunate. Okay. So it's just gonna load up. You'll be given five problems from your addition table. Answer each as quickly as you can. Rest in between problems if you like. See the problem, say the answer silently, then type the answer and press return. Use the left arrow if to erase mistakes. Please press return. Please press return. Well, now I have to say please. Please press return again. Well, press return to begin. Well, it's not being that, it's not going to be nice to me. It's not using good math. I'm just going to leave. No, we're just going to do this. Too hard. Oh God, that's a hard question. Hey, I think it's four. Oh, I did it. Oh my God. Four plus four. Oh, it's also a hard question. Maybe it's eight. Wow, I'm doing better than I thought I would. No, actually, I know what I'm doing. This is all really easy, man. Halfway. Great. We're halfway. Five plus five is ten. Five plus two. Um, seven. Really easy. I know. Yeah, I'm sorry about the amount of glare. You mastered all five questions. Woo, I got a hundred on my test. Isn't the next student? I'm the next student. I don't want to be the next student. It's not fair. That's a, so. <laughs> I'm just going to go do something real fast. And I probably deleted my score because I closed that it as it was saving. I was going to go back to color monitor because really all I'm doing now is just shutting down the class. So now, um, see, this is, see, the reason that you would have a password 
is some stupid kid who signed into your account, but you can do control P if you don't, if you forgot your password. And I assume some kid would figure that out. <laughs> That'd be me. So I would be able to do that, okay. D is just Um, how about control D? Now we're gonna go and this is how all sense of Oh, great idea! Deleting all students' attention, everybody. We just shut down our class. We just lost all of the students in our class. Doesn't matter. Okay. There we go. So there's that. There's really high end um, copy protection. You see, do not copy. What? How well that works? You just make a million copies of it, and nobody even notices. So now we're just gonna go do a quick. Comp